Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, back again for another live show, uh, broadcasting from the studio today. And good to see y'all, y'all tuning in here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna chat about a little bit of everything, and uh, just having. I apologize if I get uh, if if my face has this purple stuff on it, but I'm just drinking some purple stuff. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, we're uh, we are on the cusp of of the uh, Mavic Air Two. Uh, Mavic Air Two should be here any. I mean, I'm expecting Mavic Air Two any day now. So as soon as it arrives from EpicDroneShow.com, man, I am ready to take that sucker out and and see what it does. And does it do it well? Does it do it poorly? You know, maybe it's a combination of both. Who knows? Hmm. So, yeah, a bunch of a uh, bunch of cool stuff coming, and I'm gonna flip out uh, flip out my mobile camera here. I'm gonna show you all some things that are that are in progress here on Irish Guys Adventure Channel Studio. Let's see. Let me just get to my to my program here on this, and then we're gonna do allow. And let's see what we got here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to flip over to this cam. And here we go. Boom. So see, now you can see my other camera, and this this audio is coming through my phone. That's my, that's my special uh, frozen beverage. It's got fruit and all kinds of good stuff in it. So that's over here on my, on my studio desk, and you can see that's my studio's desk right here and then when i flip around here you can see that's my green screen and my very nice but highly affordable rug and then this over here with the led lighting underneath purple led lighting so the green screen is definitely improving these acoustic panels have really drastically improved the audio quality in this studio so uh, someone was asking earlier they're like hey man are those are those acoustic panels, are they purple or are they blue? They're definitely purple, as you can see here. I've got my lighting better refined today. Um, and then over here, I've got this this uh, display with sound bar and wireless subwoofer. And actually, this is a work in progress. The, uh, the ATEM, A-T-E-M, and because of the heightened demand for streaming services, it'll probably be... Uh, well, I don't know how long. I mean, it could be weeks or it could be months. But as soon as I get my ATEM studio switcher, it's going to control the chroma key. This right here is going to become one of my field monitors. Or not field monitors, but studio monitors. And then what I'll put over here is the ATEM. And then I'll have the cables for it running to the professional camera. Well, the camera right now is on my desk right there, the uh, Sony Alpha. And I'm going to have all of this wired up with Pro Audio so that... Uh, you know, when I'm doing these live shows that, uh, you know, that you will uh, be able to, uh, what's the word for it? You'll be able to have the full, because I mean, this is, you know, like I said, Our Skies Adventure Channel has always been an educate a self, self-educational process. So, I mean, this is just, this is the next level, uh, you know, for the channel. And, you know, upgrading the studio, I am, you know, to be able to do this being an independent, you know, being an independent YouTube channel, to be able to have this to where it is already and to have this more convincing live chroma key, wait till the ATEM arrives, man. When that ATEM gets here, this chroma key is going to blow your mind. And, you know, it's all that. And then, you know, obviously the next components after getting the chroma key, I mean, the lighting and the, and the audio is... Uh, you know, I feel confident that has been nailed, but, you know, the next steps will be better perfecting the, uh, the control room, you know, the control room for the studio, and then also the, uh, the, the seating arrangement for the studio. I mean, right now I've got this green screen, but I've got, you know, I've got a desk. Yeah, it's great to have a talk show desk, but wouldn't it be cool if I had like an actual talk, a legitimate talk show set? So, you know, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of enhancements coming here soon. Something I also want to do, and the technology that I have should enable me to do it, 
is start bringing on, uh, you know, incorporating live guests as part of these shows, you know, Iron Skies live show. I think that'd be really cool, you know, chat about drones, chat about technology, uh, chat about whatever, and just have, you know, multiple people uh, being able to uh, to be part of the live broadcast. And I think that'll be that'll be an interesting uh, interesting thing. But yeah, we've uh, you know Mavic Air two, you know Mavic Air two. Hopefully, be here any day now. I mean, I'm you know like everybody. I mean, you know we're waiting on un- uncertainties to unfold, and you know shipping is one of those things that has been you know heavily impacted by the by the pandemic so you know it's hard to say when and if you know well not if but when things might arrive and and that's uh you know i mean i understand i mean if it takes you know typically with a new drone here you know it would be boom it releases boom you know i'm getting mine asap not a pre-release but a production version that i bought and uh you know, rushing out to the field as soon as I've unboxed it. But I mean, this, this may be slightly delayed and, you know, just because of the, you know, the, the uh, global uh, pandemic that's going on right now. So, I mean, I know we're all part of that pandemic. So, you know, it is what it is and, you know, we'll get there and we'll be able to, you know, field test the Mavic 2 Air and, or Mavic Air 2 rather, and, and see what it does or what it doesn't do. I mean, what if it's a total flop? And, you know, one thing I will be sure to do when I get my Mavic Air 2 is I will use disinfecting stuff because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to unbox something and, and catch the, you know, the you know what that's going around. That wouldn't be good. But yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're marching along. It is, it is already, let's see, what, it, what which month is it? Let's see, it is, these days and months run together. It is May the 6th. Of calendar year 2020 so i mean we are we are marching forward and we are marching forward confidently so you know something i always appreciate you know seeing all the all the viewers tune in your comments got a quiet crowd today man y'all need to speak up uh, speak up ask questions post comments mean nasty friendly or <laughs> i mean whatever i mean it doesn't matter just you know put it there feel free to super chat super sticker you know how does uh, you know how does the studio look? Is it looking better? Um, you know, do you want to do you want a VIP studio tour? I mean, if you do, I can I can pop my uh, I can pop my secondary camera out again and and do a walk in blabber. So you know we can do we can do whatever you want to do. I mean, this is this is a live show and and uh, yeah, the live component is is something about YouTube that's always excited me because. You know, YouTube itself is a really cool tool for posting videos and, you know, engaging with others. But when you add the live component, you know, that's that's a different animal because a lot of people, including myself, aren't necessarily, you know, your 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 people type people, you know, the people that are that are comfortable interacting with other people and uh, you know, just the natural you know the people, the sales the salespeople type. Um, the salesperson type that they can go into any environment and, you know, ask, you know, they, they're always at, they're throwing compliments and they're asking questions and, you know, they're just kind of the center of attention by default because they know how to, um, you know, their understanding of people and, and what is perceived as popular and positive, you know, their, their understanding of those things are, is very high. So, you know, they're able to walk into any environment and, and just be the center of attention. Where YouTube lives a little bit different, you know, YouTube content creators like myself that, you know, may go out in the field and they may fumble and they may have to reshoot the video a few times and then they take it back and they edit it and then they realize that, you know, hey, this would be better if I move this here, move that there. Uh, Philippe says, hello, Ed, what is the subject tonight? The subject tonight, man, is whatever you want it to be. If you want to talk about video conferencing, uh, if you want to talk about drones, if you want to talk about video editing, if you want to talk about how to set up the best home internet, um, you know, I've, I've got, uh, I'm here, you know, I am here to, uh, to respond to whatever, but, uh, yeah, YouTube, you know, YouTube live, different animal, you know, learning how to, uh, you know, how to on the fly interact with others. And, you know, I've, I've, I'm not a, here's, I've never considered myself to be a, 
a salesperson and this, that, and the other. I mean, I, uh, you know, I've got an education in public relations, which has nothing, absolutely nothing to do. Well, I guess it could. I guess it could have something to do with social media, but it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I, I, who knows? Philippe says, did you have time to look at the video of French Chef? Actually, I've got your link, and I've got it on my to-do list, and I haven't bumped, I haven't bumped the priority of it, man, but I've just, uh, I've been, uh, I've been in turbo ninja mode, just doing some things, doing some things here around the studio, uh, perfecting the audio. I haven't, the only thing I've watched, shamefully, the only thing I've watched is some show on, uh, yeah, you said Bruno Albu's, uh, amazing French chef. Welcome, Brent. Welcome aboard, man. Um, yeah, I want to, I want to check it out. I watched a show on Netflix for probably 30 minutes or an hour last night. Uh, some sort of show, uh, uh, what was the name? I can't even remember. It's Fauna or Falba or something. It's it's pretty cool show. Uh, what is your drink right now? Great question. And actually, I'm going to be posting the uh, the drink recipe. But this particular drink, it's uh, it's no sugar added. I didn't use any mixes. Uh, basically, what I did, I got some uh, I got some cheap but quality rum. Some rum from uh, uh, from Saint Croix which they've got really good rum. It's a, it's a place called Cruisin', which is, you know, the more affordable rum. I mean, there's some high-end rums I've got, man. I'll walk over there to that table and, and show you all my premium rums. But for, for mixing a rum drink, uh, this Cruisin', just the Cruisin' Dark, you know, nothing nothing fancy. I got some Cruisin' Dark. I've got a bunch of ice. I've got, uh, as weird as it may seem, I've got some blueberries. You know, you really don't think of blueberries in a, uh, in a Caribbean drink. And then uh, I've got some frozen mango, and then I've got some 100% pineapple juice with no sugar added. A kai fruit. Oh, man, that sounds good. Andrea. Oh, Andrea, welcome aboard. Andrea says, hello, that looks yummy. It is It is so good. Um, it's, it's cold. It's refreshing. It's fruity. And I don't have any added sugar in it. And it's good rum. <laughs> but, yeah, we're... Uh, yeah, Philippe says, please watch him for one video. It's amazing. I definitely will. Problem is, and, and one of the reasons I hadn't watched them yet, because when I watch cooking videos, I get uh, uh, I get really hungry, and then I want to you know go out and get something to eat. And you know, being in quarantine, that's not an option. So it's kind of like I need to do that though. Uh, let's see. Philippe says in Cuba. They have great rum, believe me. Yeah, there's a, uh, and it wasn't Cuba, but it was in, I was in St. Martin, and I bought this uh, this rum. Let's see, what was the name of it? Uh, I will find it here and share this video. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> Man, this was some good stuff. So I went down to, uh, I was standing cul-de-sac. Good rum with no added sugar. Yep, good rum, no added sugar in the rum either, I don't think. I mean, it's it's the authentic made rum in St. Croix. Speaking of Cuban rum, that's the closest to Cuba I've been with rum, and that is uh, Rum Barbon Court. It's a Haitian rum. And... You know, I went in this uh, this really nice. Uh, it was a small French grocery store in uh, cul-de-sac on the eastern e- on the east end of uh, of Saint Martin, and I you know I was trying to conserve some cash, man. And you know they had all these liquor in Saint Martin was more expensive. I can go to you know when I go to the USVI, I can get liquor really cheap, but liquor there was expensive. So you know I'm nickel and diamond myself. But, you know, still going for quality. And turns out, this rum barbon, barbon court, I may have mispronounced it, but this stuff was a premium rum, man. A Haitian rum, never really, never really thought about Haiti and rum. But it was, uh, it was, it was super good, man. I didn't bring any of it back because I, 
I drank it all down there, but it, it was good. Uh, Brent says, sounds good, but I don't drink alcohol. Fruit makes a good smoothie. Yeah, fruit really does. And you don't, I mean, I just added a little bit of rum to it for the, you know, for the, because uh, <laughs> I like rum. But uh, yeah, especially if I had some bananas and I've, the reason I don't have bananas because I'm, I've, I've got a limited quantity of, uh, of disinfecting wipes. So, you know, if I buy fresh fruit to be safe, I'm going to have to scrub it all down on the outside before I use it. And for that reason, I've just gone with frozen fruit and they didn't have frozen bananas. So I've just got, I've got frozen mango with frozen mango is good, man, but it's hard to beat, you know, any sort of frozen drink. If you add a banana to it, it just adds that, uh, that additional texture and that unique flavor that, you know, that really further sets off all the other fruits and or rum, if you have rum in there, um, and just, you know, makes it, uh, you know, a better blended drink. You know, something I, something I've always enjoyed is, uh, is making a, uh, you know, a really nice craft frozen drink. And I, I don't drink a lot of frozen drinks because obviously, even though it's no sugar added the way I make them, there is, uh, you know, sugar in rum and then there's sugar in the fruit. So, you know, you don't typically want too much of that. But it's, uh, what's your favorite cocktail with fruits? With fruits, uh, that's a, that's a wonderful question. Um, and some of the stuff, I don't really know what all was in it, but the best, the best fruit cocktails that I remember, there's a, there's a really nice restaurant. It's in a place called Paia Maui, um, in Hawaii. And it's called Mama's Fish House. And they have the best craft cocktails in there all different types of fruits so i'm i'm assuming passion fruits uh you know papayas mangoes um you know maybe some uh, some dragon fruit that sort of stuff i don't know what all was in it but i mean every time you know when i think of of an excellent fresh fruit cocktail um you know i think about uh i think about mama's fish house in maui because they have i mean in those drinks i mean 15 20 dollars or so a pop u.s but, you know, perfectly crafted, unlike anything that I could, you know, I could ever create on my own. Uh, Philippe says, here's the link for you, Ed, of Bruno Booze. Just call- oh, thank you. And it says mango, banana, pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. And I put pineapple juice in here. I should have, I should have put some uh, pineapple chunks. But, yeah, it's, uh, uh, Brent says, yep, I agree with the banana. I love passion fruit. Yeah, I do too, man. I tell you, I like, uh. I like, uh, I really like, let's see, what is it? Is it star fruit? Star fruit. I like star fruit. And uh, there's one called a, uh, ah, what do they call it? It's a weird name. Soursop. I love soursop, man. It's soursop. Oh, Andrea. Oh, my gosh. There we go. I can, I can drink again. Andrea just super chatted $30. That is incredible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Andrea just super chatted. Speaking of super chat, if you don't know how to super chat, I mean, you don't have to, but if you do, that's awesome. You can you can uh, click down in the chat area. It's got that little dollar sign, and you can super chat or uh, or super sticker if you want to do so. That is that is incredible. Thirty. That is that is awesome. I appreciate that. That is super good. So. Uh, yeah, passion fruit. Uh, man, I love soursop. Uh, you know, any any kind of fruit that I can put in a blender and oh, pomegranate. Like pom. That's not really. I wouldn't say that was a passion fruit, but it's man, pomegranate. Pomegranate. I think pomegranate and uh, pomegranate and cranberry have a very similar taste and and mouthfeel uh you know when you drank the juice uh, philippe says in dominican republic they call passion fruit shinola 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 there we go that's cool learn something new every day man i tell y'all that's uh man you got a passion fruit mm, good stuff shinola well hopefully we'll get uh Hopefully we'll get through this pandemic so we can get back on the airplanes and the boats. Andrea says, "Oh, lychee or lychee? I've had that. That is that is super good. I love I love that stuff. 
I love that. So, whoa, we are up to $50, man. 50, the big five, zero. Can we get to 100? I'm not, I'm not going to push it. <laughs> That's, that is awesome. That is awesome. $50 for a live show. Uh, so what do y'all want to talk about? What questions do y'all have? Um, you know, this, this show is open forum for, for whatever. Obviously, no no profanity or no sensitive subject matter. We always keep everything here on uh, Our Guys Adventure Channel super clean. But enjoy a drink on me. Philippe, I will do that. And actually, I think what I'm going to do after I drink this, because I just put a little bit of rum in there, I think because of the super chats that I may enjoy. Actually, let me bring it over here, and I'm going to show you all. Hold on just a second. Actually, let's do this. Let's do a little walk and... Let's do a walk in Gander. I'm going to take y'all over to the to the bar area here. Virtually take y'all over to the bar since we're all quarantined. And I'm going to show y'all the magnificent selection of premium rums. So I've got over here, I've got, and I'm going to choose one of these to take a sip of. This is Ron Zacapa. Sistema Solero. 23 uh, products of Guatemala. And then right here, I brought this back from St. Kitts, even though it's made in, uh, in Jamaica. This is the Master Blender's Legacy Appleton Estate. Appleton, out of all the rums, Appleton has a very unique, unique uh, nose and, uh, and just overall flavor. I can't, I can't think of any other a uh, rum distiller that has this. And what it says on the back, and I, I quote uh, from Appleton Estate, it says, from the makers of the finest rums in the world comes Appleton Estate Master Blender's legacy, a tribute to three generations of our blenders. This exclusive luxury blend was created using our rarest age rums, at the heart of which is the most exquisite 30-year-old rum. These extraordinary rums age to perfection under the nurturing care of three generations of our blenders. These rums were personally selected and blended by our master blender, Joy Spence, infused with the wisdom of her mentor and predecessor, Owen Tulloch, and assisted by her protege, David Morrison. Appleton Estate Blenders Legacy was created by these blenders to share their passion for rum with everyone who is passionate about the rum they drink. So that's that's very uh, uplifting. So let's see what else we got over here. So we have this doesn't count. That's tequila. This counts, and this right here is from Providentialis Turks and Caicos. Uh, this is Bombara, the spirit of Turks and Caicos. Let's see if they have any interesting information on the back. Well, it's just very abbreviated. It says Bombara rum, the spirit of Turks and Caicos. Enjoy Bombara and the unique legacy of freedom and tradition it celebrates. Okay, we might try that. Uh, the other one here is, uh, and this one I have, I have sampled, and it's delicious. Uh, this is 1703 Old Cast Collect Selection, Mount Gay 1703. This is from Barbados, and this is one of their, and they, I'm, I'm disappointed they don't have any sort of thing to read on the back of it, but this is a, this is a uh, higher tier uh, version of their rum. And then we've got, this one right here is really good. It's a good sipping rum. This is uh, Angostura from Trinidad and Tobago, 1919. Let's see if they have a little story on the back. Oh, they do. Let's read it. It says, Angostura, Trinidad and Tobago, Caribbean rum. Nearly 200 years of our expertise is captured in this blend of aged rums with unspoilt islands of Trinidad and Tobago. With notes of oak, cocoa, and vanilla, we believe that you will drink no smoother rum than Angostura 1919. And I will say that is probably a true statement because I've got, uh, uh, well, we'll talk about it here in a minute. Now this one right here is not eligible for, for the sipping. Uh, this is not until 100 million video views, which I think I'm almost at 52 million video views now, but this is the Gosling's estate family reserve from Bermuda. And this one says Gosling's family rum. Gosling's Family Reserve Rum. Gosling's Family Reserve Old Rum has been a secret for generations 
enjoyed by members of the family. Old rum is created from the incomparable Bermuda blend that makes up the smooth, full body, uh, full flavor of Gosling's Black Seal rum. The rum is left resting in the oak barrels where, is it, where it is aged until it has acquired a luscious, well-balanced complexity resulting in the finest of sipping rums. This rich, soft, elegant old rum is created for the enjoyment of those who appreciate the finer things in life, like our Guys Adventure Channel. Uh, welcome to the family, Goslings. And then this one right here is uh, bottle number 427. So uh, it's 40, yeah, 40% alcohol. That, yeah, that's not being opened until I hit 100 million video views. That's a, a celebration rum. Brought that back from Bermuda. And by the way, as I mentioned, the black seal is the wax top. Has nothing to do with the seal animal. So just some rum knowledge for y'all there. We'll walk back over here to the studio, to the studio set on my fake hardwood floor. Boom. Sit back down here. Flip her back around to the other camera. And back on here. Let's see. And then, let's see. And, Philippe, I would definitely enjoy that drink on you, man. Actually, on you and uh, and Andrea, I appreciate y'all super chats. That's that's super cool. And then uh, Philippe says, "I saw." Uh, it, Philippe says, "I cannot wait for my next vacation." Same here, man. It's it's time to get out and and get out on that boat and see what's out there. You know, go to the go to the less uh, traveled hot spots. Not hot spots. That sounds that sounds pandemicy. Uh, the un untraveled, uh, the unexplored regions of the Caribbean. There you go. The less explored regions of the Caribbean. Philippe says, "I saw last time next to your TV, your beer cups from Germany. Do you go to Germany? Um, no, I've got I've got a lot of uh, I, I've never been across the pond, man. I mean, I go I go all over the place. Never been across the pond, but I've got uh, I've got some uh, some family that's uh, actually they they live in Switzerland, so." I get a lot of I get a lot of cool uh, uh well a lot of cool stuff from from there. Uh Philippe says, "Have you been to Barbados? I heard it's very nice in St. Lucia. Oh, St. Lucia. I've never been uh there but one I hope I will try those islands. Yeah. Uh I've never been to St. Lucia, but I've been super close. I've been to St. Kitts and Nevis. And uh St. Kitts and Nevis were both awesome. Uh, St. Lucia was just a little puddle jump away, but I never made it to St. Lucia. Everybody that I know has been to St. Lucia says it's awesome. I've got it on my radar. Um, the only thing that's deterred me from going to St. Lucia, being an adventure travel channel on YouTube, is that if I go there, I'm pretty much, that's probably going to be my one-stop gig. Whereas if I go to St. Martin, I can go to St. Bart's, I can go to Anguilla. If I go to... Uh, if I go to St. Thomas, well, heck, I've got you know that's kind of my that's kind of my playing field because I can go to uh, I can go to St. John, I can go to Tortola, I can go to Peter Allen, I can go to Virgin Gorda, I can go to Yost Van Dyke, I can go to Norman Allen. So uh, Barbados, I've never been, and I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about Barbados. Like Andrea said, uh, she's she heard our, Barbados is beautiful. I did have an interesting conversation with a couple, well, not a couple, but this guy's wife. Um, <laughs> so I, I was in the pool in uh, in St. Bart's, and and this uh, this girl was out there, and I started talking to her, and I said, "Hey, what's up?" And uh, she she had a uh, <laughs> this is a true story. She had a British accent, and she was from Barbados. And she was just out of the pool while her husband was doing business on uh, on St. Bart's. So we we chatted for a while, and I was like, "Yeah, I said that, you know that that seems pretty cool. You know, what do you what do you like? You know, do you like Barbados? I mean, that's where she lives is in Barbados. And of course, she likes Barbados. But she was vacationing while her husband did business and uh, conducted business in St. Bart's. But uh, supposedly, it's a very big island." And it's supposed to have a lot, a large variety of very soft sand and swimmable beaches. That was one one complaint I had about uh, St. Kitts is that St. Kitts is great, 
and there's a lot to do there. But as far as a quantity of, of swimmable beaches, you know, on St. Kitts, you're not going to see as many as you do on some of the other islands. And that's, you know, Barbados is a place I want to go. Uh, one of the reasons I want to go to Barbados is, uh, you know, I'm not a hotel guy. And I know, Philippe, I know you get some amazing deals at the Marriott and, uh, you know, the Westin and all of that. But even though I'm not a hotel guy, I do use a uh, points program for, for a uh, popular credit card, and it's a Hilton card. And Hilton happens to have a very nice but affordable, from a points perspective, hotel in Barbados. So I'm tempted to save up enough points and, in essence, use my points to get to get my you know pil- uh, room and pillow, and then uh, and then explore Barbados because Barbados is a big place. I mean, as far as landmass, it's it's pretty big. It's a lot bigger than a lot of the other Caribbean islands. So. Yeah, exactly. Philippe says perfect for drones, and yeah, and I, and that's why I'm like, man, I want this, I want this COVID to go away because I mean, right now, you know, it's uh, eighty nine dollar. Man, <laughs> that that is cheap. I mean, you can't even go out to a super a super nice dinner for that. I mean, you're getting a that's incredible, man. You're getting a you're getting a hotel in Barbados for that's that's cool. I tell you what, if you beat me to Barbados, let me know how it is, because that's that's one I've got on my radar. And uh, you know, and and again, you know, Barbados is kind of one of those one hop and and that's it kind of thing because the uh, you know as far as close by islands, you know, it's kind of out there by itself. So it's not like you can hop on a on a people ferry or a little puddle jump. Well, there's probably a small airplane you could hop on, but. You couldn't do the cheap, uh, or I shouldn't say cheap, but the affordable people ferry over to neighboring islands. So, you know, but because of the size of the land, because of the land mass of Barbados, you know, for someone like me, and again, I look at these, these are, these are vacation destinations, but when I look at them, you know, I'm looking at, okay, what can I do there? How many beaches can I film? Where can I drone? You know what? What can I tour? Obviously, on on Barbados, one of the one of my highlights would be going to uh, would be going to the Mount Gay Distillery. You know where they make Mount Gay rum. I mean that's that's some good rum. And you know back to the rum conversation. Uh, Mount Gay is one of the top. I would say Appleton is one of my favorite rums just because it's got a unique flavor and it's, you know, the nose on it and everything. I mean, it's just super good and I, I can't wait. And that may be what I sample because you said, you know, have a drink on me. I may break out that uh, that that Appleton and, and try that and uh, see what it's like. But, you know, there's there's a rum in the in Tortola and it was, they refer to it as the Navy, the Navy rum. And it's because the British Navy used to ration it to their uh to their naval officers it's called pussers p-u-s-s-e-r-s and i've had pussers rum man and they've got a little pussers uh little rum thing in uh in on in tortola what's the name of that I'm trying to remember it's, a, it's one of the main marinas there but they've got a little pussers restaurant that that serves rum in these really nice cups and um pussers is a rum the navy pussers navy rum is something you've got to try if you haven't had it it's another rum that has a totally unique flavor. I mean, completely different than than an Appleton, completely different than than any other rum out there. I mean, it's it's got its own identity, kind of like that Angostura over there, the Angostura from Trinidad, Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, that stuff has its own its own identity. And you know, when I'm when I'm you know when I'm going after rums, I mean, obviously this the rum that's in here is just a, it's a high quality rum. I mean, Cruisin makes great stuff. Um, you know, they're from, uh, they're, they're located in St. Croix, but this tier of cruising is just your basic dark rum, nothing fancy, but for mixing a, you know, mixing a frozen, uh, a frozen fruit drink is perfect. You know, the, those other rums, I mean, those are rums that you just sip because they're so, so well blended and they've got all the, uh, all the intricacies, intricacies associated with them. And, and, uh, you know, this, this rum is just a mix in with fruit kind of rum. I mean, it's good. I mean, people could sip on, on, uh, on, uh, cruising if they wanted to, but at least this grade of cruising isn't that great. 
Uh, let's see. Philippe says in Dominican Republic, in Dominican Republic, have great rum too. Yeah, I've, that's the place I want to go, man. I've never been to the DR, and and I definitely want to go there. Hybrid Life says Irish guy back edit with the Rolex. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the non date, the no date. One of my favorites, man. I mean, it's hard, you know, when you're uh, when you just want something to wear anywhere. And it's not too big or too small. I think 40 millimeter, man, I think for most people is pretty much a sweet spot. But yeah, it's uh and I got I got this in uh in Grand Cayman at a uh at a at a store in Grand Cayman. I had that many years ago. I can't remember when was that. Seven, eight, nine years ago. But yeah, it's it's been good, man. Keeps great time, plus minus two seconds, so it's pretty good. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, Philippe. I appreciate, it, man. You know, as soon as this as soon as this pandemic clears, and I mean, you you have no idea. Well, I know everybody has an idea because we're all part of this uh, part of this problem, and we're part of this global pandemic. But it's, uh, I mean, right now, I mean, I just saw my, my Alexa device over there. It's talking about meat, meat shortages, and they're limiting how much meat you can buy. So, you know, things, I think, thing, unfortunately, I think things are going to get worse before they get better. You know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be a pessimist, but, you know, I just hope that, uh, hope that this clears up because it's, I mean, just getting out and, you know, and going somewhere you've never been. And, and that's why I'd, lo- I'd love to do, seriously, I'd love to do the Dominican Republic. So... I'll have to, uh, you know, once this clears up, man, I'll have to hit you up and and get some some recommendations there, because that's uh, that's unexplored. I've I've never been there at all, and that's that's one of the biggest thrills, you know, is going to a uh, going to a location that you've never been to, and just kind of seeing what's there and figuring it all out. And from a YouTube perspective, it's awesome because you know you you're creating con- you're capturing content that's new to you as well to your viewers and and like most anything else you know if you've if you've frequented something and then you're videoing it you know your level of enthusiasm for example somebody at a uh, let's say at a at an amusement park or something like that you know somebody that does the same thing all day the same thing and they're explaining it to their you know the the visitors but their level of enthusiasm whether they intend for it to be or not their level of enthusiasm tends to dip a little bit. I'm plugging in my charger because they've seen it over and over. And you know, your your audience can see that. And and that and for that reason, you know, I love travel destinations I've never been to because when I'm capturing the videos, I'm extra excited because I've never seen it. When I'm capturing the videos and narrating the videos, I'm extra excited because I've never seen it. And you know, that enthusiasm is is able to be heard and able to be seen uh, by your viewers. Uh, hybrid life says my first rolex was the non-date and that's why i found your channel only way to do it man you know you do with the other and and when i got this and this was back this was back before you know they i don't want to accuse them of market manipulation but there's a lot the supplies somehow manipulated you know we can go into that in in a different video but they had the hulk and they had the batman and then they had the non-date and they were trying to steer me towards the uh hulk and they also had the Kermit with with the uh, with the aluminum bezel, you know. And, and looking back, you know, I would have. Uh, I, I'm confident that I made the right decision because the non-date, you know, without the date cyclops, without the date complication, is the most, in my opinion, the most iconic uh, wristwatch in the world. And the other ones, although they may be popular temporarily, the Hulk and the Batman. And, and we're already seeing it now because of the pandemic, you're seeing the, uh, the you know, the, the uh, pre-owned market, the value of those is starting to decline. And I think, you know, your core references, you know, like the no date, I think that's, you know, I think that's Rolex is king. Uh, looking at Omega, without a doubt, Omega is the Omega, C- or Omega Speedmaster man on the moon. And it's... Uh, yeah, I mean it's yeah, all three would have been great. You're right. Uh, let's see. 
Dominican Republic, I'm the master there of the island. I know where the great spots. I've been there 20, wow, man, 20 times. It's a big island. Do you feel safe everywhere on Dominican Republic? I mean, it, but I mean, I know obviously where you, where you've been, you know the area, so you know where to go. But are there places that if someone hasn't been there that that could be really sketchy, or is it that type of island? Let's see. Yeah, it's uh. That is that is on my radar. I've got Dominican Republic places to go. Dominican Republic, new places that I haven't been. Dominican Republic, Curacao, Barbados. I'd like to go to Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I'd like to go to Saint Lucia. Yeah, I know, and that's. That's the thing, man, Philippe, I think we were talking a while back. You can, in St. Kitts, it can be dangerous, too. The most dangerous place I've been, and actually uh, someone that was staying where I was staying in, in the grill, you just went down the shops, down the street from the grill, dude was knifed in broad daylight in a shopping center. I mean, it's it can happen anywhere. Yeah, if you speak Spanish, that, that could... That would be definitely beneficial in, in uh, Dominican. That's one thing I like about uh, you know, I like about the USVI and the BVI is that everybody there, I mean, most everybody there, they're just speaking English. I mean, they're speaking the, you know, they've got the Caribbean accent and it's got an, a, uh, a European type uh, accent to it, but it, it's really, it's really cool. I'll have to hit you up for Curacao too, man. That'll be awesome. I've, and that's what I want to do is hit up these islands that you know that the Advent, Irish Guys Adventure Channel hasn't been to yet. Because I, here's the thing, man. When it comes to repeat destinations, Saint John and the, I mean, it's just impossible to beat, man. I mean, just you know, if you're flying in from the United States, Saint Thomas is so easy to get to. The car ferry from Saint Thomas to uh, to St. John is so simple. And then hopping on the ferries or the private charters to get to all the BVI, super simple. The guy with the knife, that was in uh, Jamaica. Uh, I was staying in, and this was a long time ago, I was staying in the grill, and it was a shopping center uh, not far from uh, the grill beach where we were staying. Guy was stabbed, just a tourist, just like us. I didn't see it. We were, we were probably uh, few. Was it a few hundred yards away? We we heard about it when we got back to the to the. We were standing in all, and I'm not a resort guy. We were standing in all inclusive there. Um, <laughs> it was it was actually a pretty pretty crazy place. I, I mean, it was it was very crazy. I didn't realize how crazy it was, but it was called hedonism on. Uh, <laughs> It was hedonism in the grill. So basically this resort, half of the resort is fully clothed and the other half is nude. So so the uh so the bottom line was that, you know, I was there and this this was a long time ago, man. I mean, this was back early two thousands. And I was there with some girl I was going out with and and uh we were staying on the prude side and you know, we said uh we said, Yeah, we wanna so we didn't really think about uh, think about going over to the to the clothing option. Well, it wasn't clothing option; it was no clothing if you went to the other side. But every day at four twenty on the beach on the on the nude side, they had this this shack that opened up, and they played all this reggae music and opened up uh, jerk chicken. They put it on a paper plate, and you had jerk sauce, really good stuff. But the, <laughs> the kicker was you had to walk over there. It was a nude beach, so you had to get nude. So what we did, we just uh, my girlfriend at the time and I, we just we just got really loaded because it was you know it was hedonism. So we just drank a bunch of rum and we just stripped down, ran over there and ate uh, at four twenty in the afternoon. Ate this jerk chicken out in the ocean, just standing around naked, eating chicken. But yeah, that was Jamaica. 
that was Jamaica. And I, again, that was back in early 2000. That was a long time ago. And that's when that's when I was down there when the guy was uh, was stabbed in, in the grill. But uh, Philippe says, "I hear St. Thomas is not too safe. St. Thomas can be very dangerous, and the place, the parts of St. Thomas that can be very dangerous. If you're in uh, the cruise ship port area, Charlotte Amali, if you're there when cruise ships are not in port, or or after the shops have closed, that's where a lot of people get into trouble, and and that's." Uh, you know, you know, St. Thomas, I've stayed, I stayed for a week or actually about nine nights in St. Thomas, but I was on the other side of the island, uh, overlooking Maggins Bay in the basement of this house. It was a very nice place. Had a, had a deck and you, you walked outside and boom, there's, uh, you know, there's Maggins Bay. So yeah, Andrea, it was a blast. Um, I, I wouldn't say I would do that again, but you know, it was uh, it was <laughs> it was fun. I mean, it's an open bar, unlimited food. I mean, it was it it was just a booze fest. And I mean, obviously, there that was back before I had Irish Skies Adventure Channel. So I mean, I was just down there, you know, with this this girl I was going out with, and like, hey, do you want to go to Jamaica? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, let's go. <laughs> so we just went. <laughs> So, so that was, uh, yeah, that was a crazy place. But yeah, we, uh, we're all going to have to link up here after this pandemic clears and chat about, chat about the vacation places. Cause Philippe, I've got from you, I've got to find out more about Curacao and I've got to find out more about the Dominican Republic and actually and, I, and I'm, I'm obviously not asking for this, but I, I may I may ping you to see if there's any public, uh, you know, any sort of public deals for hotels down there, because that those would ma- those might would be places where, you know, I might would stay in a hotel versus a vacation rental like I normally do. Whoa, let's see what we got here. I'm doing curbside. Yeah, let's see, what is that? Something just came up here in my messages. That'd be awesome, man, seriously. As soon as this stuff clears, because I'm... <laughs> I tell you, I'm I'm going stir crazy, dude. Stir crazy. Let's see. So what else is going on? We got. Uh, Man, I tell you, this super chat is awesome. <laughs> That's the thing about a live show, man. You do a live show, you get these super chats. Bloop says, you have to tell me how many days you will be there because the place is so big, you cannot do everything in one shot. Here's my goal. So my goal, here's the way I'm turning the pandemic into a positive for Iron Skies Adventure Channel. So my goal is this. I'm going to forfeit travel during 2020 you know just for safety purposes you know don't want to put anyone else at risk or put our skies adventure channel at risk forfeit 2020 travel stockpile the travel funds and do something epic during 2021 so really what i'd like to do you know typically i stay seven nights to maybe nine nights i want to do something big man like 14 nights and just go and explore and film a few terabytes worth of 4k video (laughs) with drones and cameras on the ground because i mean that's that's how i get the content for this channel man i mean it's you know this is not something where i'm going to a stock photo or stock video site i mean this is you know i've got i've got toes in the sand and you know i'm out there filming this stuff it's fun you know it's a reason to reason to go to these places but yeah that's my goal man 2021 
unless they, yeah, but yeah, unless they find a vaccine, hopefully they will, man. I mean, I know, I know there's a lot of optimistic people within the medical community. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, here's my assumption, you know, and I, I don't want to point a finger, but you know, and I, I don't want to talk politics, but I'll say this. And if it's, if it's possibly deemed political in nature, that's, that's fine. If it turns out that they determine that this virus was indeed created in a laboratory somewhere, if it turns out that it was created in a laboratory, there's probably a pretty good possibility, pretty good probability rather, that there's probably a vaccine for that. I mean, if it was, if it was man-made, if somebody made it, then they've probably they're probably already familiar with the cure or maybe they'll be able to know how to cure it because they create it. Who knows? And, and maybe it wasn't created by, by humans. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, I'm just, I'm just thinking outside the box here. Uh, Philippe says, Dominican Republic is fantastic for shooting 4K. You will not be bored there. You know, that's one of the things I really, uh, <laughs> that's one of the things I really like about 4K video is, you know, especially when you're at the beach, Caribbean is hard to hard to beat because there's, you know, the water has multiple colors. Again, to your point, if you're shooting in 4K, you will not be bored there. I mean, there's, you know, photos, videos, you just get that color. You know, everything that you film, if you're filming it with a good camera and you have moderate camera skills, you know, like I do, then you can capture some really amazing footage. And it's, uh, you know, that's that's one of the things I love most about being down there is just, you know, having, uh, you know, having just a sandbox full of things to film. And, you know, and obviously YouTube, I love YouTube, and I love these live shows and, and all of this, but it's more, it's more than just, uh, <coughs> it's more than just filming videos. I mean, this is, I mean, like we've exhibited today, I mean, this is, uh, you know, it's chatting about stuff, it's it's super chats, it's uh, all this good stuff, and we're having a good time here. Uh, Philippe says, Dominican Republic has a little bit of everything. 14 days, you will do a lot. Yeah, and that's my goal. I mean, I don't, you know, because 2020 has been, I, look, look, I'm a realist, 2020 is ruined. There is nothing good that's going to happen in 2020. The only thing good that can happen in 2020 is that this stuff can be 100% can become 100% inoculated. If that happens, that opens the floodgate for 2021 and hopefully there will be some big travel deals then. Beaches, mountains, city life, countryside. That's awesome, man. I tell you if you go to St. Kitts, one of the things there that was cool that was not, it was kind of out of the ordinary, but it was a UNESCO travel, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was Brimstone Hill Fortress. And that place was super cool, man. You drive out in the middle of nowhere in St. Kitts, you, st you start up this road, there's monkeys everywhere. And actually, St. Kitts is really cool because there's monkeys everywhere. They say that, the, the locals say that there's more monkeys on St. Kitts and there are people. I mean, they're just running everywhere, green monkeys. They're not green, but they call them green monkeys. And uh, just really friendly. They're, you know, climbing the trees, this, that, and the other. So you pass all these monkeys, and you go, you start going up this hill to Brimstone Hill Fortress. Brimstone Hill Fortress is a really cool... It sounds like a travel commercial. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Brimstone Hill Fortress is really cool because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And... You know, you've got to go there, you've got to hear the story to to relive what happened. But basically, um, unfortunately, a lot of Katishans died there because of the lead in their in their drinking cups. But it's just a really, it's an awesome place. It's a fortress on top of a hill. You get up there, you can see Nevis. Um, you can just, you, you can see for, for tons of nautical miles. It's just a really good exercise. Um... Yeah, I mean it's it is it is fantastic. It's it's one of if you're ever in St. Kitts, you've got to do Brimstone Hill Fortress. It's it's super cool. Check out my videos on my channel too. 
and I, <laughs> back in the early days of drones, I had a drone out there and I was, and they were polite about it, but this was back, you know, before drones were heavily regulated and, and, uh, I was told, Hey man, you, you know, you don't want to fly here. So I, you know, I was polite and I landed the drone, but man, I, I still got some cool drone video before I landed it. Not as much as I wanted to get, but it's, I mean, it's just, if you can imagine an old, uh, European style fort on top of a tall hill on this awesome island, just looking out over open ocean. I mean, it was, it was incredible. It really was. But yeah, we're, uh, we got, let me see if my Mavic Air 2 has shipped. Let's see. Mavic Air 2. Let's see what we got. Has not shipped yet, bummer. Just a reminder to everyone, if you're if you're looking for the Mavic Air 2 or any other drone, because I am an independent YouTube channel, I've got to got to promote my channel, EpicDroneShow.com. Just head on over there and click Buy a Drone. You can find all the drones and all the drone accessories. And if you can't find what you're looking for, shoot me a message, and I'll be happy to uh, try to find that for you. Ah, Philippe, great question. Actually, a video topic that I've got coming up. By the way, what is going on with the drone's remote ID? What is your take on that? Stay tuned. <laughs> I saw that email today, too. There's going to be a video, man. Great, great question. Uh, the setup says, Hey, Irix, I watch a documentary on the extinction of, mam on the extinction of mammoths. mammoths. And the film was saying that one of the reasons they vanished was from trans species viruses, not just over hunting. It was made in 2001. Scary. Ooh. Well, and I don't know. We, we, we go down this path, and well, why not? You know, independent YouTube channel, say what I want to say. There's no big brother telling me what I can or can't say. I don't want to scare anyone. So if you're, if you're easily scared, you may want to step away from this live show because what I'm about to say may invoke a sense of discomfort my fear is that we're dealing with a uh with a virus that we don't really know much about and even the medical community they don't seem to know a lot about it we know that viruses can mutate to the setup's point what's really scary what's super scary is you know what if we're just in the what if we're just experiencing the infancy of this virus and we don't know how it may morph into something even worse you know so so for that reason i think it's super important that everyone remains turbo vigilant about you know doing everything they can to stay away from from everyone and every and see that's what's tough you know you, you know not to get into the political side of this but that's what makes it tough because we know the only way for this to go away is to keep people from, to prevent people from spreading it. But if you prevent people from spreading it, you're preventing a lot of people from, uh, from being able to exist. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work from, uh, you know, work from anywhere opportunity. I mean, YouTube, YouTube work from anywhere, but what you don't think about necessarily don't think about with work from anywhere is that, what we're doing like right now, this live stream, you chatting with me, me face on video with y'all, this all depends upon a working internet connection. For that internet connection to work, it's got to be, it's got to remain active. It's got to, you know, people have got to support it. If there's a natural disaster that severs one of the internet lines, it's got to be repaired. So not everybody has the, has the ability to, to you know, to to work a hundred percent remotely to earn their to earn their keep. So for that reason, it's a tough thing. I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know, and I've got I've got friends in high places politically, and and I'm not going to say who they are, but I do. I've got friends in very high places politically, and uh, you know, I've heard the political opinions. I've also got people that are that are medical professionals whom I trust that have witnessed the the tragedy, you know, firsthand, 
and they know it's real. So, I mean, I've, I've heard the political side. I've heard the, you know, the medical side. My takeaway from, from all sides of the fence so far, and I didn't even mention the media because the media is, don't trust them. But from what I've digested from people that I trust, the politicians that I trust and know personally, the medical community that I trust and know personally, the opinion that I've developed is that, okay, the medical community doesn't really know what's going on. It's confirmed that it does indeed exist. And yes, they have witnessed deaths, so it's it can be fatal. And the political side of it is, you know, there's a big component, you know, surrounding the uh, the economic piece. And, and that's important. But, you know, there's going to have to be somehow science and politics are going to have to come together and and say okay you know here's here's a middle ground you know we we understand that the economy is important because if it collapses you know a failing economy can in essence kill people just like a virus i mean it's you know if 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 people were are broke you know they they could die just like the virus if people were infected they could die the virus is real the uh the the failing economy is real as well. So there's really no, you know, if I if I was a genius, well, I guess I am. According to, I mean, I'm not being cocky, but according to my IQ, I'm supposedly a genius. But uh, if I was if if I was a political genius and I was also a doctor, what I would say is, uh, you know, let's let's just look at you know let's let's weigh the options on each side. You know, here's. Here's the uh, uh, born 100 years too late, and it will. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is a tough one to... Uh, uh, Andrea says, no balance between our health and livelihood. Yeah, I mean, it's... It is, uh, it is tough for a lot of people. And and the thing is, you know, just the just the uh, the self isolation component. I mean, this is something, you know. Obviously, we're dealing. We seem to be dealing with it well because we're interacting with with others on YouTube live streaming. But you know, there's some people that, you know, let's say they don't have a computer. Let's say they don't have internet, and they're confined to their home. You know, there's people that are that are probably going, you know, borderline uh, seriously crazy at this point in time. Philippe, your life or the economy? You know, like I've said, health before wealth. And and again, that's a tough one to say because, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a capitalist. You know, I love to, I don't love to make money for the sake of making money. Be like, oh, I'm, I'm cool. I like to make money because it's, it's not the money. It's not the dollar that I chase. It's the freedom and the adventure that that money can create, you know, it's, it's not the, it's not the dollars. It's the, you know, Hey, I, I want to do that. I want to see that. I want to, you know, I want to, I want to do something exciting. And, you know, it's just kind of like a, it's kind of like a ticket, you know, to do whatever. Uh, the setup says, I am hopeful for herd immunity. It will just take time. And Philippe says, let's look in the middle. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's no, it's, it's, uh, It's it's a really tough, tough situation. I mean, it really is. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it's tough not having even an educated assumption. Uh, Philippe says, I know you will not get crazy because you had the booze. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I, had, I, put, I put a little bit of rum in this. And actually, thanks to y'all's super chats, I'm going to enjoy a... Uh, a, a sip of a premium rum here in a little bit. Just checking on, uh, checking on a message here. But yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, this is one of those things. It, it's confused everybody because most people never saw this coming. I mean, it's even. Uh, there's, it's not like, okay, this has happened before, so let's try X, Y, and Z. 
I mean, yes, there's there there have been pandemics in the past, but they were so far in the past that that the world surrounding those events was completely different. I mean, now we're a technology technologically uh, advanced society, and and actually that's that's a blessing because many of us are able to uh, to telecommute and you know perform our professional functions from uh, from wherever. You know, hopefully, you know, far distance from from everyone else. In the past, that wasn't an option. I mean, in the past there wasn't internet. I mean, it was what was it? The Spanish flu was that the closest thing to uh, to uh, you know time frame wise to this? I mean, who knows? I mean, it's uh, it's just. I mean, I I don't know. Let's see. I'm I'm looking at a at a message here. Making sure they didn't do anything I didn't want them to do. Philippe says, I'm going out, Ed. Have a nice evening. And everybody else, I'm going to have my own cocktail. With rum, of course. Philippe, thanks as always for tuning in, man. And and have a, have a really good talk, cocktail. Thanks for that super chat. Andrea, thank you for your super chat. We're going to do another live show soon. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to take a shower, <laughs> to be frank. That's all I'm going to do. So thank you all for your viewership. Tune in again, as always. Um, you know, I appreciate it. Because without you all being an independent YouTube channel, this this stuff wouldn't happen. So it's, it's, uh, it's super cool. And I'm going to tune out. Y'all have a good day. Be safe. Hey, y'all. I, Rick Sky here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you.